Hi everyone, Susan here. Okay, in this vlog, as I'm covering this Italian vintage shoulder pad by hand with fabric, I want to talk about fashion, couture, what it means to me, why I still love it, what it's all about, why I even started this channel in the first place, and all of that. And that's what's next. Okay, before I get started, I want to say if you're just watching me for the first time and you're loving this video, please subscribe. I have lots of great videos to show you. And if you want to learn French draping from me, you can go to my Patreon account. The information will be in the description box below. And I teach you French draping in detail on my Patreon account. And I also answer specific questions of advanced uh, designers on that platform as well. Okay, before we get started, just so you understand, I'm sure showing you covering this shoulder, vintage shoulder pad, but the actual dress and the making of the dress will be in a video coming after this that I wore in the Vicky Teal interview. So just keep that in mind and watch that, watch the video if you haven't seen it. And the um, how to make that dress will be coming up shortly. Okay, let's get started. Why I love fashion. Oh my goodness, I still do. And I think there are some people who just are in this business for the sole purpose because they love it. You know, it's, not, it's never really been about the money. Um, it would be nice to have it, but it really never was about the money. It, was, it always was and still is about the makings of a couture garment, the makings of an art piece, the makings and the engineering and the, the problem solving and the unfolding and the developing of a design. That's what it's always been for me. Now there's different types of designers and there's different levels of design. I'm talking from pure where I'm at, which is in the couture, m making the garment 3D, you know, not caught up in, you know, Adobe Illustrator and making flats and putting a board together and putting color stories. That's all great. That's all essential to fashion design. But what I'm going to be talking about in this video is my formula or my process of creating gorgeous couture pieces and high level fashion and the love of it and why I still love it and also I'm going to talk about it a little bit later why I even did this channel in the first place like why 2010 guys okay so let's get started with the couture part what brought me to this place to loving couture wanting couture and being so involved in couture. I think it goes back to an artistic expression. For me, this is mostly an artistic expression. It is my way of showing my art, showing my gift, so to speak. I'm not just saying, I'm not saying that I'm gifted or I'm brilliant or any of that stuff. I'm just saying that that's something I believe I have inside of me that is the way I'm able to express myself, guys. That's the way I'm expressing myself. I'm not doing it through sculpting or painting, even though I probably could. I chose the medium of fabric, dress form, the human body, and sewing and pattern making and, and draping. That's my medium, and that's how I show my art. And I will tell you that I still am fascinated, and I still watch a lot of other videos on how things are made, because I'm still totally fascinated by the way things are made. And I think that is the elementary reason why I picked couture, rather than, you know, uh, contemporary or ready-to-wear or... Um, you know, different other levels of design. Footnote, guys, that music in the background is literally the birds in my backyard singing on this day outside in my Florida backyard with my pool, and I'm sitting here doing this. I'm not going to dub any other music over it because, frankly, the music around me is, I think, more interesting. So that's what that's all about. So, okay, continuing on this journey. Um, I just want to let you guys know that my favorite part when I went to FIT, my favorite 
part of the entire process was going into the FIT library where we were able to go in small groups and uncover masterpieces of the geniuses, the real geniuses of, you know, um, the past. The, and seeing their work, I'm seeing a Fortuny, some of the few Fortunies that still exist, and how that pleading was developed. We don't still know to this day how that pleading was developed on Fortuny, that Mary McFadden later designed her uh, pieces from that whole idea of Fortuny. Seeing a Galanos dress, seeing a Christian Dior pieces, seeing all these great, brilliant designers from the past, and getting to actually look at the garment in, in, from the inside out, turning the garment inside out, looking at the seams, the construction, you can almost map and understand how they put this design together what they, was the motivation on the construction of putting that design together. What was the bustier? What was the thing that structurally put this dress together? All of that, all the way down to the finishings, the seams, the buttons, the hemlines, the buttonholes done by hand, the, the handwork that is so important in couture, the strategic shapes of the garment, the backings, the understructures, the mid part of the structures, the layers and layers of organza and interfacings and linings and bonings, all of that stuff, guys, all of that stuff, that was very important to me. And to this day, I will do these little journeys. I will go to a store um, and I will go to a high level store, Saks or Neiman's, and I will take certain pieces in the dressing room and just look at it. Or uh, at this point, I don't even really care if they watch me look at it on the floor. I don't really care. They're not going to kick me out. If they do, whoopee, <laughs> do. Uh, so I'll take apart, I'll look at the inside of some of these pieces. I'll see the construction and I'll maybe learn a different type of hem that I, I should use and, or a different way of lining or interlining a garment or a different way of doing a neckline that maybe I don't know. This is where I pick up the information. This is where I learn. This is my school. This is the way it's all done. So that's, that's what that's all about. Meanwhile, as you're watching my shoulder pad demonstration here, I didn't line it by machine. This is all done by hand. And I'm doing just a, a slip stitch or a back stitch to secure this shoulder pad. And I'm doing this only because I want to show you this by hand. I actually even love this process. I was doing this shoulder pad with the TV in the background or music in the background. And I was just videotaping this uh, for, for you guys to see later on because this is my zone. This is my zen. You know, like Michael Jordan said, and I'm looking at that, just this magazine about his life, his brilliant life that I actually was able to witness. And he says that the most peaceful time of his life is when he's on the court. Who would imagine that being said? What's so peaceful about a competition and a basketball game? But that was his zone, guys. That was his zone. That's where he was. The brilliant. That's where he excelled. And that's where it all came about. So this is my zone, doing the handwork, not even thinking about it, not structuring it, not reading about it, not, you know, figuring it out and doing it over and over, but just taking fabric, taking a needle and thread, taking a little bit of wax and just cutting it out and sewing it by hand. So that's what I want you guys to experience. If you have the love of couture, if you have the love of wanting to know how a garment is put together, why a garment is put together, how that design was developed, then I'm telling you, go for it. Go in couture, go into high fashion, go into high level design and make that your art because believe it or not, there is still a significance to that type of work. And I still believe in it. There wouldn't be video after video with Dior and Chanel and all of the others putting on YouTube if there wasn't still a fascination of that world 
That world will never completely die, I hope. I could be wrong, but I hope. So just showing you that and making you understand that that's what's in my mind and that's what makes me tick as far as fashion and design. So let's say you don't like to engineer it. You don't like to um, take something apart or see the way something is made from the inside out. But you have great ideas. You have this thought when you look at something that it should be this way and not that way. Or that should be over here and that pocket should be eliminated. That's also creativity. That's also designing. That's also fashion. And that is also needed in the industry and that's different. But that is also fashion. And there's no reason why you can't be a designer. Yes, you will probably have to learn other things like Adobe Illustrator. You will have to learn color th theory. You will have to understand the basics of design um, and drawing and draping and all of that. And even sewing because you're going to have to understand the process whether you do it or not. I say this over and over again. You're going to have to understand the process even if you're not doing it. I tell my former clients this, every one of them. I tell my former students this, every one of them. And I tell every person who's still interested and wanting to get into fashion design, you're going to have to understand the process. You might not have to do it on a daily basis, but you better understand that process inside and out. And then get qualified people to help you. But you cannot get qualified people to help you if you don't know the process. How will you know if that qualified person that is brought on your team to help you is doing it right or wrong? Bingo, guys. It'll only happen if you understand the process. Get in the nitty-gritty, whatever it is. Do something from scratch and understand it and feel it. Okay, enough said about that. Let's talk about why I even started this channel in the first place. Okay, if you don't know my history and my past, I've been doing this for 30 plus years. And there was always a love and a desire to teach my whole life. Even before I entered FIT, the end goal for me was to ultimately be able to teach. I believe it's because I have a teacher's heart. I love to give and show the process and inspire people. And I found out at one point I wasn't able to do that because I didn't finish or fulfill the educational level that I was supposed to have. Meanwhile, there were people who saw my gift and were able to see my history and my longevity in, the, in my fashion career, who brought me on and said, we will get the proper letters for you to teach, so come on board. And so I did teach at a university, on a university level, Miami International University of Art and Design. And I, was, I took it very seriously. They wanted FIT standards when I got there. And believe you me, I gave them FIT standards. Not really sure they liked it, but we did it. But I also developed a kinship with the students who later followed me elsewhere. When there was the crash, the second crash in the industry and fashion was hit, I was let go since I was the last person hired um, as an adjunct professor at this university. And, and the, my students were following me to my car and they were like, I'm like, what do you want from me? And they said, we want to pick your brain. And, I, and they said, I don't know how, how you're going to do that. I said, well, you'll have to come to me. And they did. Some of these kids took two buses and a train to see me and to learn from me one-on-one -on -one this process on how to be a designer. And I taught that privately. Meanwhile, I found out how exorbitant the prices of education was in these schools. And I was also noticing how many ed schools were dropping fashion programs at the time. And I said, you know what, I'm going to put this up for free. I'm going to put this up on a platform for free. And that's what I did. I decided, I, I wasn't even sure if I could be filmed, if I was even someone that could be on film. And I did a test shoot, and that's the first video. Long story made short. Um, they 
the guy stole my idea and my name, but I was able to get the actual raw footage that I put unedited on YouTube. I wanted to give it away on an early scale in an early stage, and I did. And so that's what I did. And I would put on these videos here and there, not consistently, um, as I was able to fit it into my schedule. And I also realized that I didn't monetize them back then. That's another footnote, um, because I probably would have uh, been able to actually make some money if I did on some of those earlier videos. But that never really mattered. It matters only to me to survive and be able to do my art and my designing and to give it back and to inspire as many people to understand this process and to, how do I say this, um, uh, uncomplicate the process, to make it a tangible, to make it um, acceptable, to make it easy to understand and to watch and to make it kind of universal that almost anybody could understand. That is my ultimate goal in this process. I will, you know, as I continue to do my YouTube channel, I will continue to do this for many years. Um, so that's why I did it. And I still do it today for pretty much the same reason. I am all for education, guys. Don't get me wrong, and please do not stop going to school. I really believe in education. I believe this is an accent to education. It also could be a fulfillment of education to some individuals who do not have the opportunity to go to a university, who maybe have other professions for other reasons to survive. This is exposing it and giving them that as well. Uh, but I, again, I never say that it is in replacement to education of any sort. So I hope that this is an enhancement and, and beyond for you. I love your feedback. I love your questions. So please let me know how, you're, how I'm doing with all this and what direction you want me to go in. I do want to do some more videos on interviews with top level people in the industry. It takes a little while to develop these and to get them done. So those will be uploaded as I get them. But I just wanted to show you this process and, and explain this process to you. This is it, guys. This is it for me. This is my art. I hope you understand that. I hope you are inspired by it and you develop your art because of it. Because let me tell you, there's nothing like creating. Nothing like creating and being a creative person. It is difficult. It's still not easy. There's nothing that is easy about it. The industry is still very harsh. But at the same time, there's so many new avenues of succeeding in this type of business. So I hope that you will not let it go. I hope that you will continue to follow your dreams and to, to be inspired to create and to make gorgeous garments. All right, guys, so those are the shoulder pads. The only thing I did by machine um, was the marrowing on the edges, okay, because that had to be done um, in order to clean those edges. And then it was put on the dress itself. Other than that, I'm telling you guys that, you know, it is still feeling it that makes me inspired. It is still giving it to you guys that keeps me inspired. It's still having the ability that God gave me to create that, that keeps me inspired and puts a smile on my face in this um, sunny day in Florida in my backyard. How lucky am I in that respect? So keep watching. If you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. I know it's, it's unorthodox what I did this time, but I just wanted to document it for all of you guys to see and understand. And so please keep watching. Stay tuned for the next video. I will upload the dress on how to make this plunge dolman sleeve dress with the Czech woven dyed elastic French goods. And that's coming up next. Thank you. Bye-bye.